welcome back please subscribe to this channel the globe trotter to know when we post the next video budapest is the capital of hungary with a youthful ambiance a pulsating nightlife exceedingly scenic setting and very rich architecture budapest is one of the most delightful and enjoyable cities in the world it is nicknamed paris of the east it's a merger of two historic cities lying on the two sides of the danube river Buda is the western side with the high hill with Buda castle and Pest is the relatively flat eastern side with the parliament opera hero square and busy streets retaining all their architectural heritage The Millennium Monument is one of Budapest's prominent sites part of the UNESCO World Heritage list it was made in 1896 for the 1000th anniversary of Hungary It is dedicated to a handful of outstanding Hungarian statesmen, kings and heroes who made Hungary a better place. The tall column in the middle has an angel holding the crown at the top. At the base is a group of seven horse-mounted figures representing the founders of Hungary. Statues in the left colonnade are kings of Hungary while the statues on the right are Hungarian statesmen. Next to that is the Budapest Hall of Art or Palace of Art, a contemporary art museum. The large neoclassical structure was also completed in 1896. It hosts temporary exhibits of contemporary art. It's run by artists and does not maintain its own collection. It's an institution of Hungarian Academy of Arts. Right opposite to that is the Museum of Fine Arts. It has international art non-hungarian and comprises more than 100000 pieces including a statue by da vinci it has the largest number of spanish paintings outside spain voy do hunyot castle is not really a castle at all it's a full scale model of another castle built for hungary's 1896 millennial celebrations the structure was supposed to be only temporary but people liked it so much that it was rebuilt to last St Stephen's Basilica is our meeting point for a free walking tour. These tours are common in Europe. You join a free tour and pay what you want at the inn. The guides take this gamble so they really know their job well and are confident of earning their due by engaging you. They give you really useful information. This church is 96 meter tall because 96 is an important number here. Hungary was founded in 896 and it celebrated a millennium in 1896 so the metro the parliament many structures including this church were built that year it has two steeples and a dome on top it was built here because hundreds of people survived a flood on this spot the main figure here is not jesus but it is saint stephen who was a king and a saint we walk across a bridge to the buda side of the city climb up the castle hill and reach the top from where the view is fantastic just one clarification here i have visited budapest multiple times sometimes in june which is mid summer sometimes in september which is end of summer so the images of the same spot may look different in different seasons the castle hill was first settled in the 13th century after a mongol attack led people to seek an easily defendable area This hill is now a part of the UNESCO World Heritage list. The Rococo spire of Matthias Church is one of the easily seen landmarks. The popular Hungarian king Matthias or Matthias held both his weddings here and so it is known by his name. The church has pyrogranite roofing which is very expensive but it is done deliberately to show off. This is the statue of the first king of Hungary, Stefan He carries the cross with two cross bars, a special symbol made for him. The Hunyodik Garden was once a marketplace. This statue of Prince Eugene of Savoy was made for city of Zenta which could not afford it. So it was bought and kept here temporarily till the statue of the king can be made, but that never happened. The print reliefs show the battle of Zenta. Here we have a statue of a man taming a wild horse. And then we have a group of bronze statues known as the Matthias Fountain. The work features King Matthias Corvinus in the company of his fellow hunters and hunting dogs. 
And here is a poor young woman who fell in love with the king not knowing his status during a hunt. This group of people stands between fallen rocks with water running down into a basin. We got down the hill along the steps admiring the view. There is a rivalry amongst the residents of Buda and Pest. The Buda side is upmarket and the Buda residents tease the Pest residents by making remarks such as the only good thing about Pest is that you can view Buddha from there. And there are two types of people. One, those who live in Buddha. Two, those who want to. We now look at some monuments near Danube. This one is created in memory of the German invasion of Hungary. It shows the Imperial Eagle of Germany attacking Angel Gabriel of Hungary. The Jewish community got angry with this as they allege that Germany did not invade, it was in partnership with Hungary. So the monument should not absolve the Hungarians of their collaboration with Nazis. So the survivors and families brought their personal objects such as photos and pebbles and are protesting here. Half million Hungarians were killed by Nazis. The shoes on the Danube bank is a memorial erected here to honor the Jews killed by the Hungarian fascists during World War II. They were told to remove shoes and were shot here, so their bodies fell in the river and went with the current. The iron statues represent the shoes left behind on the bank. Besides these monuments, the walk along the Danube river bank gives you many photo opportunities. It has many life-size sculptures spread along the bank. We have statues of common people such as a girl playing with a dog or a painter at work. These are mostly bronze sculptures and make your stroll satisfying and titillating. Some places even have lovely reliefs. The view across the river in fading light is wonderful. You also observe that people in trams passing by are in some hurry to return home while the others, the walkers, are in a relaxed mood. Plus the decoration of buildings with lights and the decoration of streets with flowers add impact to an already adorable and amorous amble along a promenade. The river has many bridges but the favorite of locals is the chain bridge. It is seen in many Hollywood films such as I Spy, O Pair, Walking with the Enemy and Spy and the Indian Hindi film Hum Dil De Chuke Sanam. There is a legend that the lions at both ends have no tongue so the sculptor committed suicide. But it is not true. The tongues are just not visible and the sculptor died of old age. The Hungarian parliament building is the seat of the National Assembly of Hungary, a notable landmark of Hungary and a popular tourist destination here. It is situated on the Pest side of the city on the eastern bank of the Danube. It was designed in neo-Gothic style and has been the largest building in Hungary since its completion. An international competition for architects was held, which was won by Hungarian architect Imre Steindl, whose design was used for the parliament. The designs number 2 and 3 were used for the ethnographic museum and a ministry both facing the parliament building. The building was inaugurated on the presumed 1000th anniversary of the country in 1896, though it fully got completed a few years later. Its height is, you guessed it, 96 meter. It is one of the two tallest buildings in Budapest along with St. Stephen's Basilica. All large things here revolve around the nation's millennium. 1896. The square has statues of former Hungarian statesmen and prime ministers. In 1956, Hungarians had a nationwide revolution against Soviet imposed policies of the puppet government. It was crushed and 3,000 civilians died in the shooting by the police. A monument was made after the collapse of Soviet Union. These are the bullet marks and these as well. This is the Ethnographical Museum. Images are from different trips in different months. Sometimes said to resemble the parliament building in Berlin, the white neo-Renaissance facade complements the neo-Gothic parliament building opposite to it. It's a museum of course. In addition, it has richly decorated interior including the ceiling frescoes by Karoy Lotz, the person who also frescoed the state opera ceiling. It had a painting exhibition when I visited. The Hungarian State Opera House is a neo-Renaissance building 
designed by Hungarian architect Miklos Ebel. Austro-Hungarian Emperor Franz Joseph I funded 2 million forints with the condition that it will be smaller than the one in Vienna. The city of Budapest funded the remaining 1.5 million forint with the condition of using local labor and local material. The opera opened and made the king angry as his condition of size was met, but this looked much grander. He never visited again, though his wife visited again and again. Decoration includes paintings and sculptures by leading figures of Hungarian art, including Bertal and Seke, Morthon, and Karoy Lotz. Although in size and capacity it is not amongst the greatest, in beauty and the quality of acoustics, the Budapest Opera House is considered to be amongst the finest opera houses in the world. The foyer has marble columns. A vast sweeping staircase was an important element of the opera house as it allowed ladies to show off their new gowns. The first floor is for elite members of the society and the floors above are for commoners. They also have bars in a similar structure of hierarchy to control crowd and class. The entry fee in 1880s was equal to the price of two horses, so only the elite could buy it. There was a smoke room, but it was used by lovers as smoke made things invisible. The auditorium was closed for renovation, so our guided tour showed us only the outer area and two artists gave us a 10 minute mini concert. I was privileged to watch that since all my visits coincided with renovation. It was a thrilling experience for us and I have asked for an approval to share a tiny portion of that. And maybe I will make another video once I get the approval. We exit opera, cross the road and enter a restaurant. Imagine the love for rich decor in Hungary if a restaurant can be so luxurious. Yes, we are inside a restaurant. Of course, the building housed a department store at one time and this hall was once a ballroom. It is called the Lotz Hall because it has frescoes by Karoy Lotz, the same guy whose frescoes adorn the opera house on the opposite side of the road. The painter has painted himself here. I had foie gras accompanied by mango balls in one trip and cake in another trip, topped by a cup of coffee in both the trips. The plate was decorated in style of the overall ambiance. Doesn't it look pretty? The Margaret Island inside the Danube River is mostly covered by landscape parks and is a popular recreational area. You can stroll for hours in its large parks. It has a centennial memorial made in 1972 commemorating the 100th anniversary of the city's unification. It has a small Japanese garden with a mildly thermal fish pond. We have to go back to 13th century when Mongols attacked Hungary. The king prayed to God, if Hungary survives Mongols, I will offer my daughter to you. The Mongols returned without attacking, Hungary survived, so the princess became a nun and lived in a secluded place on this island. That's why it is called Margaret Island. The Grand Market is really grand. The large hall is 250 meter long and 40 meter wide. Around 1900, this was the main food storage for Budapest. It's a three level market hall with several small stalls selling mostly gourmet food items and handicrafts. Since 2004, it has been listed a heritage building. Budapest Metro is the oldest in continental Europe and third ever in the world after London and Chicago. It was built in 1896 for the millennial celebrations. Ending on a sweet note with a local delicacy called chimney cake due to its shape. It comes in many varieties and costs about a euro. We'll go to Greece for the next video. Please subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon so that you are notified when that is posted.
Thank you.